Hello, dear friends at Kardec Radio. Here we are at 11 p.m. nourishing our souls together. And we are here to talk about chapter 22 from the book Jesus in the Home. This book was psychographed by the medium Chico Xavier. The spirit author is Neil Lucio. For those who is the spirit referred in the book 50 years later, the grandfather of Celia. Can you imagine somebody who for 2,000 years has been working side by side with the loving forces of the governance of the earth? Exactly. And he comes to tell us about unprecedented encounters that are reported encounters with the master and he tells us stories teaching us new ways of taking action in our lives of feeling life right it's so interesting nowadays so many people are asking for specific diets of course who doesn't want the miraculous diet but we forget what is this special, this special gift in life? What is it? Do only a few have it? Or does everybody have the same opportunity? Today we're going to talk about the discussion amongst the disciples and Jesus in Peter's house when they were discussing about the gift of healing. Mm -hmm. And can you believe it? It's ever since been the gift of all gifts, right? Mm. The other day, reading something about Buddhism, we get to know of the f understanding of impermanence. So when we talk about our lives beyond the physical life, when we talk about our lives in immortality, like Spiritism says as well, right? In the convergence of these teachings in the universality of the teachings as Kardec portrays in the introduction of the Gospel according to Spiritism. We are thought, we are invited to think about what do we think every day when we wake up or when we teach our children. We often focus so much in the now, in the attachments of the now, on what is important to have, we forget that sooner or later we won't be here. So what is the most important thing in life? What is the most important thing for you? Think about it. There are people who right now cannot sleep because they are power struggling with family members, power struggling at work, or they have issues with their community, etc. And then we ask, what if today or tonight is the night? that we go back to the spiritual realm. Do that or do those things really matter? What is the most important thing for you in life? That's a good question, right? So to kickstart our program before we go to the very text, with that introduction and that reflection, we want to say hi to those whom we can see here. We can see Jailton, how are you? Carol Correa, how are you? Rihanna, how are you, Rihanna? Angie, good job, Angie. Thank you for leading another study tonight at Kardec Radio among brothers of other lands. It's phenomenal. Raquel Bakeshi, how are you, Raquel? How are you, Eliza Rodriguez? How are you, Eliza? Paula, big hug to you, Paula. 
How is everything there? Yes, Lisa Telles. Big hug to you. Hello, Daisy. How are you, Daisy? So little by little, I'll be able to see everyone who has joined us for now. Alicia Ramos, how are you? Karina, how are you? Karina, Alice, Daniel, oh, Daniele, how are you, Daniele? Big hug to you, saudades. John De Rosa, how are you? Teresa Castro. So friends, keep coming in and feel comfortable because the message today is unbelievable, okay? If you've read this before, let's discuss together. But if not, you'll be surprised. Every time I read this chapter, <laughs> over the years, I'm surprised. Not because I forget, maybe sometimes, but I'm like, wow. Only the master of all masters could really make us focus so much on the preciousness of blank. What is it? Ready? Okay. Chapter 22 of the book, Jesus in the Home. The Divine Talisman. And we read the following. Let's picture the scenario because Neil Lucio is describing a true scene that existed and is immortalized. He describes the following. The members of the household, meaning Peter's house, had struck up an interesting discussion about the sublime faculties that the master demonstrated by healing the insane and the blind. When John and James, diligent mother Isabel, asked without delay. Hold on. You know, the report says the following. We're talking about the healing faculties of Jesus. And here we have Neo Lucio, not by chance, highlighting a virtue of John and James' mother, Zebedee's wife, the diligent mother, Isabel. Why is this important? For now, we may think, ah, it doesn't matter. You see, throughout the chapter, why Isabel, as a diligent mother, is in this chapter, okay? So today, we start the program with a super mystery quiz. Why is this diligent mother important in this chapter? Okay, this is a question you may know at the end of the story. So hold on to that. Lord, might you be carrying some sort of talisman whose powers we could benefit from? Some kind of magical object that might help us? This is Isabel, mother of John and James asking the question to Jesus. Jesus rests his piercing gaze on the woman and said laughingly, pause, visualize Jesus, the piercing gaze. Can you see it? Remember, he's the master of the good news. Why is it important? Parenthesis, if you're entering here for the first time, we have been studying not only the words, but the nonverbal lessons of Jesus. And it's so important. In neuroscience, the neuroscience of emotional body language is one of the main frontiers in the field. Because we express our emotions through our emotional body language. But we have a lot to understand about the neurobiology of emotional body language. What we know this far is what we feel is primarily expressed in the body, whether we like it or not. And through that, we communicate with others. It's more than 70% of our communication 
within that venue of uh, the body. So the complete and holistic Master Jesus is teaching us not only through words, but whole body language. He's teaching us with his eyes. He's teaching us with his smile. In several chapters, every single chapter, we see Jesus smiling. But when he's delivering a lesson of good news that promote joy, hope, and courage, he's not sarcastic. And when he's laughing while replying to Isabel, what kind of laughter do you think Jesus is having at this moment? What kind of laughter? Any idea? What kind of laughter is Jesus giving to all of our, all, everybody and Isabel including? Is it a laughter of sarcasm? No. Irony? No. What kind of laughter is this? Think about this. A laughter? You see by the answer, probably. In fact, said Jesus, I do know of a talisman that has wondrous powers. So, imagine Jesus with his laughing attitude teaching this lesson. It's adorable. It's adorable. By taking advantage of its miraculous resources, a person can begin acquiring all of the blessings of our Father. This divine talisman enables people to discover the treasures of love that shine around us and whose splendor we cannot see right away. Mm. This divine talisman unveils um, understanding wherever discord punishes the heart. The divine talisman opens doors to the revelation of art and science. It offers the possibility of radiant communication with the, the divine sources of life. This divine talisman invites the blessing of meditating on holy things. This divine talisman reestablishes relations between conflicting parties. This divine talisman discloses passages of light to minds lingering in darkness. This divine talisman allows for the blessed spread of happiness. It is clothed in a thousand opportunities for widespread peace. It's, it reveals a vast network of pathways for wholesome work. This divine talisman uncovers a thousand ways to enhance our lives. It facilitates the soul's access to the thought of great masters. This divine talisman enables communications with the heavenly fountain heads, heads of institution. Visualize Jesus laughingly saying this. I see a teacher for kids who love the adorable questions of the kids, addressing it with joy. Remember, he's sharing the good news. It's super good news. What else does it do? Ask the Lord, placing emphasis on the question. This is amazing. What, what else does it do? After smiling complacently, he continued. What a lesson. Huh? Jesus is laughing and smiling. Without this divine talisman, it is impossible to start any work of light and peace on earth. The eyes of his listeners 
displayed expressions of amazement when Zebedee's wife, Isabel, asked earnestly, Master, where can we get such a blessing? Tell us we need this bringer of happiness. Then Christ added good-naturedly, you see, he's, he has goodwill, he has this joy in spreading the good news, he's smiling and laughing, and he says, this blessed talisman, Isabel, is something we all have, it is the time we are going through, each minute of our soul is cloaked in prodigious hidden power when we learn how to use it for the infinite good because every rise and every fall every victory and every defeat all begin with the collaboration of the day and before everyone's perplexed looks jesus concluded time is the divine talisman that we should avail of our, ourselves of. Do you know? Yes, we're seeing here, Livia Moraes, Melissa Delim, hello. Melissa saying, kindly laughing, joyfully laughing, Carol Correa is complimenting. I think so. That's how I feel too. I mean, I cannot say 100%. But I agree, compassionate, kind, and joyful laughter, Carol. I think that's the, the direction of it all. Adilson, how are you? So friends, what's this bringer of happiness? What is it? Time. The now. The power of now, as written by Eckhart Tolle in the book, The Power of Now. Exactly. It's this mysterious power of being in the present mindful many people talk about mindfulness but their minds are in the dreams and losing present opportunities many people thinking i'm going to create great things and as george godinho neri the president of the brazilian spiritist federation said to me once sometimes the horse is passing by we need to be ready to mount it to mount it, to ride it, but we don't. We keep thinking, oh no, no, this is not the horse I've been dreaming about. Where's the horse? The horse is gonna come. Another horse comes. The opportunities come and go, come and go. In the now, the future doesn't exist without riding the opportunities of the present. This is what mindfulness is all about. Finding the present, the gift of being, of being divine. You're divine. I'm divine. We are divine. Right? Now, let's go back to the first question we asked at the beginning of this conversation. It's not by chance that Leo Lucio is highlighting a specific virtue of Isabel, the mother of John, the evangelist, and his brother James. Diligent mother. Can we put it together? How can you be a diligent mother if you do not make wise use of the time? You see, this chapter is so masterful, is so masterfully written that we dream of the day we can be that insightful in describing a scenario in such a beautiful way. I want to open up parenthesis here. I'm not so sure if we have journalists by career in this study today. Or if you're hearing or listening to Kardec Radio, whatever you are. But with the reports of Emmanuel, Humberto de Campos, Neil Lucio, Andre Luis, they are teaching us 
a new type of journalism. Journalism for the good. They are teaching us how to write stories of the good with educational purposes. And that's the future of our planet. The day in which we won't have, we will not have any longer gossiping magazines that bully people or programs on TV that spend their day just talking about the way people dress up, the way they don't dress up, the way they marry and not marry people, celebrities, etc., slandering people. That's disastrous journalism, if ever journalism. There will be a day in which we'll learn with these phenomenal spirits the art and the beauty of writing for the good and of the good to do the good okay so as you're seeing here hello do we are learning that when we talk about the use of time a diligent matter is certainly the modeling for us and jesus in being a healing master he's saying listen to the answer many people say i want to be a healing medium and jesus is replying make good use of time because you see people in front of you at work at home in your community groups in the streets everywhere who need a helping hand and a medium who heals begun that effort though it's not acquired overnight it's an organic faculty as we know but over time through existences we open those doors by serving in the now i know people who are so phenomenal they are already there they are like nurses in the world People come to them and say, oh, I have a headache. They have a remedy at hand. Oh, people are thirsty. They have a glass of water at hand. They are hungry. They are ready to offer a meal to, sa to satiate that hunger. Somebody is in need of a loving word. They have a loving word to share. They use the diligent use of time brings us to that bringer of happiness, fosters that connection. Because we're talking about the manipulation of the divine energies. And we don't do this in the future. We do it in the present. So tonight... Neo Lucio is sharing with us a teaching of the Master. In his explanation, he's telling us that you and I were being invited to make better use of our time. Because as he says, and I will repeat the list, okay? Without overwhelming us, because the Master never overwhelms us, right? But he says, time now let's read it again putting time instead of divine talisman so he says clearly to us and this book is so educational that the chapters tie up so perfectly he says time has wondrous powers by taking advantage of time and its miraculous resources, we can begin acquiring all of the blessings of our Father. So, are we going to say we don't have time to do the good again? Many people want Spiritist books around the corner. But you know, Spiritist centers happen if and only if we know how to 
use our time for their benefit of all. That's where it all begins. If I say I don't have time, my spirit center won't happen. The good will not have place. So he says here, time enables people to discover the treasures of love that shine around us and whose splendor we cannot see right away. Pause. Write down a checklist. I would recommend. We would recommend for ourselves. Let's do this homework. Make a checklist. Number one. And throughout the next 24 hours, see if we're checking those boxes of this bringer of happiness. Number one. In time enables us to discover the treasures of love that shine around us. And you may ask, but Vanessa, where is the treasure of love? I don't know. It depends on how focused we are in the now. The power of now. As Eckhart Tolle reinforces in the title of his book, in the very book, The Power of Now. Then, time unveils understanding wherever discord punishes hearts. But do we have time? to reconcile oh no one day one life next reincarnation it needs to be done now that's the healing the healing power of using time wisely diligently then time opens doors to the revelations of art and science amazing jesus is so at the vanguard of humanity that he talks about arts and science if today people don't understand about the profundity of this concept that he just revealed to us imagine 2000 years ago today many people don't understand the importance of science and art they think it's just oh, art it's just expression of what the artist is feeling. No, he's talking about art as Leon Denis explains in the book Spiritism in the Art. And our friend Fred Gouveia and Josanna Vaz both are leading this study every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. In that study, we get to know, according to the high spirits, art is an expression of beauty and beauty is the expression of divine harmony it's knowledge and beauty together expressed through art and science but only time may make it happen right only time time and only time so rudy saying keep this talisman away from procrastination thank you so much what a beautiful way of saying this beautiful 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 thank you gabriel gabriel thank you sharing the good it's good to know that you work as editor of videos of a tv channel in sao paulo and it's good to know that. Thank you. So keep doing the good. Carol Corrie is saying, time enables us to discover the power of love. And then, Carol, it says number two, right? It unveils understanding where discord punishes hearts. It opens doors to the revelations of art and science. Time offers the possibility of radiant communion with the divine founts of life. Time invites the blessing of meditating on holy things. Mark it down. Do you sp spend daily, daily time meditating on sacred things? We need to. Oh God, it's so good, so good to know everything you've done. Look, right now, I am speaking and my hand is moving. Though I am the spirit and my body is obeying me. Wow. This is sacred. 
in the sacredness of being, the sacredness of existing, and yet not knowing what is going to happen in a million years from today. But the only certainty that we're going to be better, we're going to be progressing. Only the good news enable us to envision that time to meditate on holy things. Time reestablishes relations between conflicting parties. You see, this is the second time he repeats how time can be a conciliatory element. Many people stay in their comfort, uncomfortable comfort zone of discord because they don't manage time wisely. A diligent mother will quickly operate to promote peace. Sometimes as see mothers, they think it's okay for their children to be bumping heads, bickering amongst themselves. But a diligent mother, a diligent father, will quickly use time to operate and bring reconciliation. Right? How many people do we know had loved ones, they wanted to meet, reconcile, say the final word, and never did. Because death came first. Well, we still will have that opportunity, but it won't be the same. Not in the circumstances that we have right now. So, time allows that opportunity, which is true healing. So, Jesus is teaching us healing pathways beyond the limited view of healing the body. He's talking about healing in its greater perspective. This master is a true master. He's not selling his knowledge for cheap. Mm -hmm. And he says time passages, discloses passages of light to minds lingering in darkness. So how are we going to rid ourselves of ignorance if we don't use time wisely, right? At every moment, I can learn new things. Sometimes people say, I'm bored. Mama Mia, come here to Kardec Radio. You'll never be bored because Kardec Radio has 10,000 projects in the pipeline. You'll never be bored, never. Because there's always something new to do, something new to, to, to promote, always. And you may ask, but Vanessa, do you work? Yes, I do. Do you have family? Yes, I do. Do we all, Angie and others, have it? Yes, we do. Does Karina Lisi has work and, and study and family? Yes. And yet, Carol Correa and Brian Foster and Deborah Feldovics and Fred and Josa Navas and many others. Everybody has a life, but we're learning to make time to promote the good. You, sunshine in your group, and every one of you, wherever you are, you have your opportunity to do the good by using time wisely. Time allows for the blessed spread of happiness. Are we, as Melissa beautifully posted in a Facebook, be an encourager, loving post. Thank you, Melissa. Be an encourager. Exactly. Only time can do that. If I align my goodwill with time, healing. So this is, Jesus is teaching us that healing is not only the healing of the body, that healing the true healing is of the heart, of the minds, of our relationships. That's true healing. The healing of the body is just a natural consequence of it all. Time is clothed, clothed in a thousand opportunities for widespread peace. We lack peace because we're not making wise use of time. Time reveals a vast network of pathways for wholesome work. 
there's always another opportunity to be useful. Like Spiritism explains in the Law of Work in the Spirit's book, it uncovers a thousand ways to enhance our lives, time. That's healing. If we want to be healed, this is the recipe here. Using time to go over all these steps. Facilitate, time facilitates the soul's access to the thought of great masters. Like, may I say, Leon Denis as well. A teacher that brings to us, and I'll tease you, huh? If you say, Vanessa, I want to read a book. Which book? Read this book. After that, listen to this. How beautiful can this be? How beautiful can this be? And allow me to open the very... <clears throat> Listen to this. Patience is the quality that enables us to face any trouble calmly. Patience leads to benevolence like mirrors. The soul reflects the feelings that inspire us. Sympathy attracts sympathy, whereas indifference generates bitterness. Listen to this. Love. Love is the celestial attraction of souls and worlds. The divine power that bonds, governs, and fertilizes the universes. Love is God's gaze. So time, time facilitates the soul's access to the thought of great masters. And this is the master in his humility leading us to great masters. So in a parenthesis here, we're surprised. When we see people who are spiritist and understand the Christ consciousness being so limited to understanding that Jesus himself works in a teamwork fashion and has sent teachers throughout the earth to lead us into new feelings, new understanding. Yes, when we read the teachings of the Buddha, when we read the teachings in every other philosophy, we see the team of the Master Jesus operating on earth. Lao Tzu in the Tao, it's mesmerizing. When we see the teachings that is shared by the Prophet in Khalil Gibran, wow. And we are mesmerized by so many of these teachings that have been spread out. In the book Silence, by Thich Nhat Hanh, leading us to that peace within through the practice of silence, creating concord by using the now. Amazing. This is the open-mindedness that is promoted by the Master, saying, time used to access the teachings of the great Masters. This is the teaching of the Master. Time enables communication with the heavenly fountains of intuition. Uh -huh. People talk about mediumship, but only those who use time diligently, like Isabel, the mother of John the Evangelist, and James. Then we are able to develop, to acquire those opportunities of true healing. So Jesus as a masterful teacher, he is teaching us that time is the venue, but healing is beyond the healing of the body. He is educating us to a new understanding of healing as well. This chapter is not only about time, but it's about the true healing the harmonization of our souls with God. We're speechless. We're so speechless, right? That we want to say thank God for this opportunity. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you, God, we're here again. Thank you, God, for this book. Thank you, God, for 
our lives. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow, when we come back, when we come back, we're going to talk about distracted messengers. For now, let us do our homework and revisit our use of time and be ready for the wondrous opportunities of this divine talisman. May our lives get in the mode of true healing. Many blessings, friend. Here from Kardec Radio to you, nourishing our souls together. Thank you.